Solomon Hoodwin King Region 10 residents, Minister Edgel says government did not stymie RDC's efforts to start TV station. Finance Minister deems call by WPA for IDB to withhold loan as economic sabotage. Child sexual abuse on the front burner, forensic interviewing workshop ongoing. The Health Ministry says Kaicho News article on ARB's procurement is inaccurate and misleading, and three new secondary schools on the cards. Hello. I'm Ursula Ramdeal with this edition of Gina News Capsule. Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Juan Edgehill, has stated that there has been no delay on government's part with regards to the setting up of Linden's television station to be operated by the Regional Democratic Council. He explained that the dish given to the community was handed over by Green Construction Company to government at a substantial sum, hence it was not exactly free as previously stated by some. He also clarified that Solomon has applied for Channel 13 from the NFMU, which has informed him that the requested channel is already in use. Hence, any other channel could be applied for. The minister indicated that Solomon has refused to apply for another channel. He urged him to stop his efforts at hoodwinking the people of Linden and other Region 10 communities. Disappointing, highly irresponsible and tantamount to economic sabotage were the terms used by Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh as he slammed a call from the Working People's Alliance for the Inter-American Development Bank to halt its funding of a loan to Guyana. In this instance, the loan is obviously a loan in the environmental sector. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's attached to um, a number of institutional strengthening uh, initiatives, a number of initiatives aimed at improving environmental governance and the discharge of our environmental responsibilities. The minister noted that while Guyana has credentials at the forefront of environmental leadership, the approval by the IDB signals that institution's confidence in the work that Guyana is doing in the environmental sector. He described the funding as a second installment and the attached policy conditions as extremely important. He lamented the position adopted by the WPA as being contradictory with that which would be taken by a responsible party committed to the development of Guyana. The opposition party had described the announcement that Norway recently asked the IDB to receive 80 million US dollars as Guyana's equity in the Myla Falls hydroelectricity project as a flagrant violation of the Guyana constitution, adding that the arrangement amounted to conspiracy. Forty persons have been targeted from various organizations working with abused children as government continues working tirelessly to curb the scourge of child sexual abuse. A five-day workshop at the Police Training Center Kingston, Georgetown, is being held in collaboration with the Guyana Police Force, Child Link, Inc and the Blossom and Forward Guyana on Multidisciplinary Teams, MDT, Forensic Interviewing. The workshop focuses on the dynamics of child sexual abuse, the reason for silence from the victims, how to ask questions about multiple incidents, recantations, false and fantastic accusations, considerations for court, internet crimes against children, and other related issues. The Ministry of Health's National AIDS Program Secretariat, NAPS, has dismissed as misleading and inaccurate an article published in the Kaicho News on Sunday, February 15, titled, Nine Million U.S. Dollar HIV Funded Hinges on Guyana's Drug Procurement Practices. Director Dr. Chanti Singh stated that the information carried in the article was totally incorrect. She explained that whilst Guyana has achieved approval from the Global Fund, for a $9 million U.S. grant. However, it has not been hinged on any benchmarks. She added that the first grant agreement, which was signed in 2005, was for a five-year period, after which application for another grant would have been needed. However, due to Guyana's good performance, Global Fund suggested that Guyana submit a rolling continuation channel and a new proposal for additional funds. Achieving universal secondary education is extremely important for the future development of Guyana, and government has on the cards three new secondary schools to be constructed. One at Parfait Harmony, West Bank Demerara, to house at least 1,000 students, one at Good Hope, East Coast Demerara, and another at Suzdike for a similar number of students. The three new schools will be built under the Guyana Secondary Education Improvement Project. With this genius News Capsule, I'm Ursula Ramdeal. Good night.